Hello guys, welcome to the second video in the first chapter for Blender for computational design. Today we're going to be looking at Sparechuck and we're going to be doing a little bit of reverse engineering on how data flows through the Sparechuck in order to make our first script. So let's get started. The first thing is we're going to create a new Sparechuck node. Three. So we're going to go here, make sure we have this Virtuok nodes, new tree. I'm going to rename it to Hello Vertex. And now I'm going to create a new node with Shift A, generator line. And we'll leave the default cube. The, one of the main things in Virtuok is that uh, in order to, to view the geometry, you're creating that you're scripting um, you need to to use a node for that there's multiple visualization nodes so let's add one shift a this uh, we're going to be using the viewer 3d uh, the viewer draw sorry so i'm going to take one of these and now as soon as we connect the vertices to the vertices you can see we're able to preview them we can change the size of the vertices. We can connect the edges and change the width of them. We can change the colors here of the vertices and the edges. So you can customize this however you want. Now, um, I actually, right now what we're doing is we're using this constant value of size 10 and we're subdividing it by the number of vertices. So if you see if I increase the number of vertices, all I'm doing is subdividing the line. What I'm going to be using is actually the second option, the num option. And what I'm going to do is I want three vertices. Each one is going to, there's going to be a space of one between each other. We can change the direction here, x, y, or z. We're going to stick to x for now. And what I'm what I want to explain on this video, and we're gonna take a while on this, is how does data flows in Sparechuck? How what information is getting passed from this socket here to this socket here, and how are we able to draw in the 3D view with that information? So the way it works is we got a a list, right? So a list it's always inside a bracket. Um and then inside this list, we, we have multiple items, right? So each vertex in this case, it's gonna be an item. So we have three items inside, which if you see is three lists in itself. So we have a big, uh, a main list, a root list with three branches or sub lists inside them. Now, this is the vertex zero, vertex 1, vertex 2, so vertex 0, vertex 1, vertex 2 on our list, right? So what we need to do now is fill fill in this list here with the values that are going to give us the coordinates where these vertex exist. So in this case, it's 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, which stands for x, y, and z. In the second one, it's 1, 0, 0. And in the third one, and number 2, it's 2, 0, 0. Right? So 2 in x, 0 in y, and 0 in z. Okay. So if we add more uh, vertices, these lips this list get, keeps getting longer and longer. We can keep adding items to it, right? And we can actually preview that um, for previewing this list of vertex where I'm gonna click Shift A, text, and then I'm gonna grab a note here. So I'm gonna plug in my vertices to the text in. And as you can see, we have a list, uh, a similar data structure, of course, always separated by a comma. And we have, like we said, um, a main list, uh, a root, which in this case is in the parentheses, which it's an object. 
then we have a list of vertices and inside each vertice we have a list of numbers that stand for the vector in which the coordinate is going to be set, the coordinate for each one of these vertices. vertices. So now this is this is the way that we store the vertex data. Now for the edges, what we're going to do is we're going to have a second list that stores the values of which vertices we're connecting together. So in this case, we have two edges. So we have two items in our list separated by a comma. And then we're telling it, I want you to take vertex number zero and join it with vertex number one. So zero comma one. And then the second edge here is gonna be the vertex number one connected to vertex number two. So vertex number one, comma, number two. And we can preview that here too. So zero, comma, one, one, comma, two. And then this way we have, we're actually passing two lists here, one for the vertex data and one for the edge data. We can also pass the phase data if we have it or mesh data and, or matrices. We, we'll look into that later. But um, right now what, what is important for this first chapter is that you remember these this kind of uh, layers of lists that we're going to be using. Now, in order to make our first uh, scripted node, I'm going to click Shift A, Script, Scripted Node Lite. And the first thing that we notice is that it's expecting a text here. So we need to choose a text file. And this list of text files that we're going to have here are the text files that we have on the text editor here. So Let's go ahead and create a new text file called well, text new. And if you can see here, we already have that new text. We're going to rename this to hello vertex.py because it's a Python script we're going to be doing. And hello vertex.py. There we go. Now, if I click here, nothing's happening because we haven't defined anything. The first, th the first thing we're going to do is define our inputs and our outputs. So, in order to define a, a node input, we're going to do three quotes or three double par uh, parentheses so, and then space or enter, sorry, enter. And then we're going to write in for input, then the name, it can be number, for example, and the type of the socket that we, we want. In this case, we're going to use type S. Then we're going to close that. Uh, comment block we started in Python. So this in Python is actually a comment, but in Spreadshock is going to actually process this in, the number and S in order to create a, a, a socket for us. So if we click here now, you can see we created a socket, which is actually expecting a value of the type S, which includes floats and integers and uh, other, other single number values. Now, um, Let's make our first output. So to make an output, is, uh, the syntax is very similar. We type out the name that we want, in this case, vertex, and then the type. In this case, we're going to use the B, which stands for vector. Um, then I'm going to click reload. And as you can see, change the color. And now we have the input and an output. Now, if I change the number type to B to vector and I reload it, you can see that we also change the type here and it actually it's expecting if I click here it can automatically make a vector node for us. We're not going to be using that, we're actually going to be using the S for now and later on we're going to actually change that. But for now let's get uh, let's get to, to programming our first script. So the first thing that we want to do is actually make our own um, uh, uh, to push a value to the vertex output. So in, to do that, we're going to use the same variable name that are our, uh, that our output name. So vertex equals, right? And then we know we have a list. Sorry, that's not a list. That's a list. So here is our vertex list. And then let's type three values inside it. Just three values that we want. One comma one comma one. And I click reload and refresh. And now I want to see what 
what I'm getting here. So I'm going to plug it into the node. And as you can see, we have one list with three values inside. So we have our first point in space. If I actually try to see this on the viewer draw, so I'm going to plug this and this and actually plug this one in. As you can see, nothing is getting drawn anymore. I'm going to erase this down here. And nothing is getting drawn right now from our output. We actually have an error here that says it has no length. So if you recall on the list that we have, we had a list inside a list. So what happens if we actually grab this list inside another list? And then I'm going to click refresh, reload. OK, so now the error went away. We're still not getting uh, anything drawn there. Sorry about that. We just reconnected it. Oh. Type clear two times by accident. So we're not getting the error anymore. And let's see what values are we getting from here. So we're getting a list inside a list. All right. But if you recall, we had another layer on top of this. So here we have two options. The first option, and the fastest one, in this moment is to actually again grab our list inside a list inside another list right and then i'm going to reload refresh and as you can see as soon as i reloaded it we actually got our vertex we can change these values and every time i reload it and refresh it you're going to see the vertex is going to be moving around to the value that i choose now the way i like to do this is actually don't grab it in that final list. And what I do is that I actually tell this socket to grab whatever um, final list is there into another list. So to do this, I'm going to go here on the end menu. You type N, or if it's close, you can type, you can click on that little arrow on the right side. Square chuck, show socket menus. And then I can click on this arrow now and grab it around. So again, I'm going to reload this and I'm going to refresh it. And as you can see, our vertex is back in there. Now, this is pretty cool, but this is not parametric at all. So let's make something a little parametric. So what we're going to do is first we're going to import a library from Python called random. And then we're going to take this first inner list, so our inner innermost list with the vertex data, the vertex uh, coordinates. I'm going to copy this and erase it. And I'm going to store it in another variable called p. So now our point is in 1, 1, 2. And we're going to replace these values with x, y, and c. Right? So now Let's actually create those x, y, and c values here. So I'm going to type x equals, I'm going to call my random library, random dot randint. That's the name of a function from this random library. You can actually look into the documentation for this library. So random dot randint. And what this is going to expect is two values which is going to give us the range. Every time we call this function, we're going to get a number between two values. So which are going to, which are going to be these two values, we can tell it here. So it's going to be minus 10, comma 10. Oh, didn't type anything. Minus 10, comma 10. So what this is going to give us every time we call it is a, a value between minus 10 and 10. So to, to see this, I'm going to type print. And I'm going to call the x. And I'm going to comment this out for now so we can see that. So in order to see a print uh, function in, in, in here, first I'm going to reload it and save it. I'm going to disconnect this to avoid this error run right now. And I'm going to go to Window, Toggle System Console. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click here, uh, refresh, one, two, three times I clicked. I'm going back here, and as you can see, I got these three values, minus 6, 5, minus 3. 
So every time I click here, I get a new random value in there. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. It froze for a second with the print statement. So like I was saying, we were actually uh, getting different values for x between minus 10 and 10. So now what I'm going to do is get different values for x, y, and z. So x, y, and z between 10 and 10. And now our point, which is x, y, z, I'm going to move this print statement to the end. And I'm going to print point. So let's see what values we get. I'm going to unplug this for now again. Reload, refresh. I'm going to toggle the console. And now we're getting a list of three values. So all that we have left to do is to actually output these, these values in the vertex. So I'm going to leave this list empty here. The vertex list. list. I'm going to empty my list. And now I'm going to append my P list to the vertex list. So in order to do that, we call the function append dot p no vertex sorry sorry about that why set this is fine so we're gonna do vertex dot append and what are we gonna append to vertex it's gonna be our p list so now I'm going to actually print the vertex at the end and we'll see what we get. Load, refresh, and this. So now we're printing a list inside a list. Again, this is grabbed like we mentioned before. And now I'm going to connect it to the vertex. So now every time, every time I refresh, I'm going to get a new value in X, Y, and Z between minus 10 and 10. All right, this is it for this first video. We'll be doing, um, the second video we'll be doing more vertices and we're gonna be joining them with edges. So stay tuned.